Hello guys, uh, I'm going to record a couple of videos really quick on how to solve a 3D truss and I call this method by hand, Is uh, both methods are actually by hand uh, but this one requires a little bit more of intuition and knowing what you're doing since we're going to be studying rotations in different directions so the first, uh, the first thing, this is the, this is the element that we have to solve we have the different type of supports here, this is a wall and socket support here and roll, roller, 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 and you have the three forces applied in this part here. And this is a, a side view, uh, like a perspective view. This is a side, this is a side view, and this is a, a top view, in case that you want or you need more details about uh, the trust that you are trying to solve. Anyway, the first step, in my opinion at least, I would start by trying to identify zero force members if any. Uh, go to the video that I posted before. Uh, and if you remember there is a theorem that it says that if in every single member at a joint when you look at a joint every single member is laying in that plane except one which in this case is this one this member this member and these force are in the same plane and this one is sticking out of the plane so if you look at that that plane like that then the one that is a sticking out of the plane or not belonging to the plane is going to be a zero force member and you can erase it from the truss simplifying your process of course and if you look at this joint again and you remember now in 2D in 2D you, you have there is a theorem that it says that if you have three combinations or three bars or three forces or three whatever three two of them collinear and one is not the one that is not is collinear so is uh, the one is not collinear is zero so that means that CB is also a zero force member when you eliminate the zero force members then you start the big old method of just doing summation of forces in XY summation of moments with respect to different axes and you can do it organized you can do it just because and go into every single one of the joints do moment and create a huge matrix if you have the calculator to solve it and depending on what the problem is asking you if the problem asks you to calculate the reactions then we can start calculating the reactions uh, if the problem don't, don't ask you to calculate the reactions you can go directly for example to the method of the joints and start analyzing look for joints where you have three unknowns because that's what we are doing right in 2D we look for two unknowns in 3D look, we look for three unknowns because we have three equations summation of forces in X, summation of forces in Y and summation of forces in Z. We could start by the joint E, establish a system of equations here, and calculate these three bars. And once we have these three bars, we can, I don't know, come here. I know this one, and I would I, I could calculate by doing the joints, I could calculate this one, this one, and that one. And once I have these two, I can move here, one, two, three unknowns, because this one was calculated before. And I already had the reaction if I had that bar and that's it so just by doing this joint basically this joint and that joint three joints analysis I will solve it but I'm gonna just start this problem like if I want to calculate the reaction first and then go to the joints for example by inspection I could go to the joint B and say summation of moments about Y axis. Y axis meaning everything that is going to rotate about the vertical axis, like that, the vertical axis. So you look at the forces that are producing rotation with respect to the vertical axis, and it's only CX, which would be, depending on your convention, but if you use counterclockwise as positive, then that will be negative. CX multiplied by this distance, 4, and then you have also this force of 30 which is also going to produce uh, a rotation in that direction in the direction of negative and then you have also this force of 40 uh, 30 of course is going to be 30 30 is here times 2 and then you have 40 and that 40 will be a positive rotation and it's going to be 40 times 4 and that will be your first equation and with that equation you can immediately calculate CX and once you know CX, CX is going to be also the value of the forces here internal forces here so we have the reaction CX now we can now go and do summation of forces in X and calculate VX because it's the only unknown that I have left before I have two VX and CX now I can, I can say CX plus 30 plus Vx equals 0 
and then I can solve for Vx, which is going to be negative 55. If you're calculating the reactions, I would recommend you to change the direction immediately and put the corrected, the corrected direction because remember the one before was just an assumption. Now, if you realize in Z, my only unknown in Z is this one. So I could have done that from the beginning if I wanted to. 40 plus BZ equals zero and BZ is gonna be negative 40, meaning I'm going to change it in that direction. Now we can move to a different joint. If I move to the joint A, and now I look only to rotation about the Z axis, this axis, Z axis, this force, this force, this force are not producing any rotation. Uh, this force is producing rotation. This force is producing rotation about the Z axis, and also the forces over there. So basically we're gonna have A times from here to here, A times BY, which is gonna be a positive rotation. And then we're gonna have a 60 times four. I, I say this force, this force is not producing anything because it's in the same line. A 60 times four, 60 times four, and it's gonna be negative going into the axis. And then you have 30 times A because it's going to produce also this rotation which is going to be negative. And we can solve for BY. Now I can do summation of moments around X in the same support, X, so I'm going to see everything that rotates in this direction around X. Now what is making this rotate about X? Well the force of 40 multiplied by this high is going to make it rotate in this direction, which is positive. Now the force of the force of 60 times 2 times 2 is going to be produce also a rotation um, regarding the x direction, which is this one, 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 this one. This is not producing it because this is around a y. This here is, is not producing it because uh, it's passing through that point. So basically, that's it. The only other producing rotation is dy, and dy is going to be a 4 multiplied by dy, and it's going to be in the positive direction. So you can solve for dy, and it's negative, meaning that force is going to be getting out of the joint like that. What am I missing? What am I missing? What am I missing? I'm missing a y. I'm missing a by. No, by already have it. So then, basically, I can go directly and do summation of forces in y. A y minus d y plus b y minus 60 equals zero. And uh, after you put all the values, and when I say that, when I say minus d y, I am putting the corrected direction of dy, so I'm not going to put a double negative, just be careful with that, and then you can calculate the y. Once you have that, then you can continue with the joints. If you go to joint C, CD is going to be extremely easy to calculate because it's there. If you look at the joint A, basically you can calculate AE extremely easy because in y direction, the only component of, uh, the only thing uh, that is opposing to AY is the vertical component on AE, so that's going to give you the value of AE immediately, and so on. Now this method requires thinking, a lot of thinking. Let me show you how the other method will work. See you in uh, GIF.